Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of Leap Code. Assuming you have an array of integers and an integer limit, can you find the longest continuous subarray such that the max range of the array does not exceed our limit? I don't know. Can you? If the limit is equal to 5, in our case, the longest continuous subarray we can find is 2472. The max range of the array is 7 minus 2, which is 5, and it does not exceed our limit. Now, go! I need a weapon! To start with the question, we can always use the brute force solution. You have one! Find all the possible subarrays and then find one with the longest length, that the range does not exceed our limit. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But... So for every left and right boundary of our array, we can find a subarray. And we can check if the array meets our condition, which is... Then we simply return the result. Let's see if that works. So we are having a time limit exceeded, which is good, means our logic works. This is a pretty bad solution, to be honest. Time complexity is 0 and 3. Calculating the max and mean every time is quite time consuming. We don't need to do that if we already calculated those before. We just need to know if the new number we find is our max or mean. We can have a max number, uh, mean number. And whenever we are increasing the right boundary, all we need to do is to update the max number and mean number. If later we find our array meets the limit constraint, we can simply update our max lens. Let's see if this solves our question. I'm fast as fuck, boy! So we are still getting a time limit exceed. Since this algorithm is now changing from 0 and 3 to 0 and 2, it is still very complex if we have a super large array. This is fine. The problem in our solution is that for a right boundary, we went through all the possible left boundaries. But actually, when we check the next right boundary, we already know that the left boundary won't exceed the one we find in the previous iteration. So all we need to do is to find the smallest distance we need to move our previous left boundary to satisfy our limit requirement. Think this as a sliding window where we want to move our boundary to the most right and see what's the minimal shrink you need on the left side. However, this solution will still give us an until time complexity. So what we need to do is for every right boundary in our possible subarray, we will find a left boundary, which starts from the right boundary and keep going left until we meet the end of our array. Later, we return the result. Okay, it's still TLE as expected. <laughs> so like we said, we will need a variable to recall the left number. And here we won't go through all the possible left boundaries. We will starting from the previous iteration. We will need some way to find the max number and the mean number. And once we find the max number and the mean number, we just need to check if our current subarray meets our criteria. Oh. If not, then we will move the left boundary to shrink it. So the problem being, how do we find the max number and the mean number? What am I going to do? We will have two queues to store those information. Let's start with the mean number. This is a increasing queue recording what's the smallest number, the second smallest number, the third smallest number between i and j. So every time we meet a new number, we will add it to our mean queue. But before that, we need to do some cleanup in our mean queue. So this is a cleanup for our mean queue. This basically means we check the queue from the last or the number that is close to our current number. If the number is bigger, then we don't really care because that number cannot be the smallest number between i and j because we are including the current number. If this is smaller, this number should replace the last number in our mean queue. We keep doing so until there is some number that is smaller than our current number, which means that number is the smallest number between the i and j. So the mean queue stores a bunch of numbers. The first number always means the smallest number between i and j. The second number means the smallest number if we move i across the first number, what's the smallest number between i and j, and so on and so forth. So if we move i to the j position, the smallest number between i and j is guaranteed to be numbers i and j because i and j are in the same position. There is only one number between i and j. I am God. So we will have a max queue do the same thing for our max number. Instead, the first number of our max queue stores the max number between i and j. So every time we meet a number, we will append that new number to our max queue. And before that, we will do some cleaning in our max queue to clean up all the number that is smaller and on the left side of our current number. 
You can even use it on the washing up. There, all clean again. So now we find the maximum number and the mean number in constant time by just picking up the first number in mean Q and max Q. Otherwise, we will shrink the left boundary. But while we're doing that, we cannot use the leftmost number anymore. What if that number is the max number? That will change how we calculate the next max in the next iteration. So we will need to update our max Q to see if that number is the biggest number. If it is, we can't use it anymore, so we will pop it. We do the same for the mean Q because the leftmost number can also be the smallest number between I and J. We can totally use a array here, but in order to make the operation here faster, we are using a DQ. The DQ can do pop and pop left in O1 time. Oh, magic. Let's see if this compiles. And let's see. The prophecy is true. And let's explain why this is faster, because since there are a lot of operations in this for loop, these are all open operations, so we don't need to care about that part. What we do care is about these min q and max q. We are only adding new numbers into our min q and max q while we are moving the index j, which is the right boundary. So every number is guaranteed to be added to our min q or max q at most once, which means the total operation of all this while function is gonna be O n. So in a time, we are doing O n, which is going through all the right boundary plus all the append operation we find in all the for loops, which is gonna be O n, and the same for our min q. And we will do some pop left, which all of the pop left operation we do here inside this for loop is gonna be O n total. So in the end, we will still have a O n time complexity. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! Oh